tonight. Products worth the hunt, Google's new wireless service, and one dude finally gets his Dell. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 322 for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code TN2 when you check out. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. This is the show where we cover the tech headlines of the day and talk to the experts behind the headlines. Now let's get to some of today's big news. Facebook released first quarter earnings this afternoon. The company's official blog says CEO Mark Zuckerberg claims they've had a strong start to the year and says they will continue to focus on serving the community and connecting the world. But profits were two cents below Wall Street's share per share estimates. Other fun facts, the company now has 1.44 billion monthly active users and 73% of their ad revenue is now coming exclusively from mobile. Facebook's other announcement was their new Android-only app that takes advantage of Facebook's social graph to provide you more information about who is calling you. Here to talk to us a little bit about this app, as well as a whole host of other apps, services, extensions, and other products, is product expert and founder of Product Hunt, Ryan Hoover. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, Megan. Good to be here. Thanks for coming on. So Product Hunt is a fabulous website for finding new products. It's basically Reddit for products where you can vote product, product projects up or down. Uh, let's first take a little bit of a talk a little bit about Hello. Um, I know we just spoke. Sweet. You don't have an Android phone, so you haven't used it. But what do you think of it as a product, as a service? Yeah, I know the Android people got it first this time. Usually it's the other way around. Uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's funny. Back when I uh, was a kid at my parents' house, the landline phone had caller ID and still my phone does not have caller ID. There are other services like TrueCaller out there that provide similar functionality, but it's very interesting to see Facebook move in this direction in part because they have so much social data and information about you and your friends. And so they're in a unique position to, to surface interesting things that other companies might not be able to do. Um, one of the Facebook designers was actually in Product Hunt describing some of the functionality and, and she mentioned some really interesting use cases around the context of where you are when you call someone or when someone calls you, they can service information about where they are, where they're located, when their birthday is, if it's coming up shortly, things like that, which are really interesting. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, the story of a guy who had this computer attached. To, I don't know if you've heard this story. He had this computer attached to him that would always give him uh, useful information, like that person's daughter went to college on the West Coast and oh, you know yeah. their birthday was last week, <laughs> like all these things that would help you like really... Uh, you know, interact with someone in a better way. And it's interesting because it's sort of fake, but it's the way the world works now. I mean, we base so much of our interactions on what we know from someone online. So right. uh, if if a stranger is calling me, I mean, someone that I'm not friends on with on Facebook, will their information come up or it only has to be someone that I'm friends with on Facebook? To be honest, I haven't dug into it enough. What I did notice in, in what was in their announcement was the business aspect of it, which I think is really interesting. So there's the social aspect in your friends and people calling you, but there's also the ability to contact businesses. And I'm now looking at what Facebook's maybe long-term goal with this is how do you enable better communication between people and businesses, which has for a long time not changed. Path Talk has, has made some movement in, in that space and making that easier to communicate. Uh, Operator, which is not released yet, is actually another product that is rumored to be doing something similar. And so I'm kind of curious to see what Facebook's long-term plans are there. So let's talk a little bit about your site. It's also a, an iOS app. I talked about it on my other show, i5 for the iPhone, a couple weeks ago. It's I saw great. that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You've had an app for a while, but the new app lets mm -hmm. you follow people, see the products they're interested in. It's, it's very cool. Um, so what gave you the idea to start Product Hunt? Yeah, the very beginning, it was actually just an email list, an experiment of mine. So it wasn't like this grandmaster plan to start a startup or anything like that. And it's just my own, my own passion and interest in products and technology. I like talking about them, sharing them. And I know that I'm not the only one. It's, it's kind of like a water cooler conversation. Um, many of your shows are based around this. And so it was just that really simple idea of how do I, uh, with my friends, share cool, interesting new products together. And it started off just like that. Cool. So what, since you've been doing this, what are some of your favorite products that you've seen of all time? Of all time? I, this is a hard question to answer. Um, 
because I've seen so many. Uh, I'll mention some that I, I am a big fan of as of late. Uh, live streaming video is an interesting space. And Meerkat, which launched, I think, about two months from now, uh, hit product hunt and blew up. And, and as you know, and everyone else, uh, especially Jeff Needles and your team, uh, are big fans of it. And it's a very interesting um, kind of new resurgence in the space of live streaming, which has been around since Justin TV days way back in the day. And I think now is actually a time where that type of format and that type of interaction can actually work. Uh, thanks to behavior change and technology today. Right. Do you do a lot of meerkatting? I do every now and then. I try not to be as frequent as some people, um, but every now and then I'll hop in. We were on the roof uh, a couple of weeks ago, me and the team, and we we're barbecuing. It's just a kind of a fun opportunity. Let's say, let's say, hey to the internet and just live stream uh, top of Soma in San Francisco and. They're fun, fun things like that. We've also done some sneak peeks. Uh, actually, before our iOS app launched, we did sneak peek and showed uh, a demo build of what we were working on and got some feedback from our community. It was really fun. So do you prefer it to Periscope, the Twitter's app that is similar, that came up after a little after uh, Meerkat? Yeah, I like them both. And I know that's like a cop-out answer, but I, I think they're both really great products. Uh, I've, I know both the founders, and I think they're both doing a really good job. I think there's room also for two different types of products and it'll be interesting to see how they converge or diverge over time ultimately. Yeah, I mean, some people like the fact that um, your cat, it just disappears like Snapchat, it's gone. But with Periscope, you know, you mm -hmm. can see those videos. I think that's a pretty big difference between the two. It depends on how you feel about that. Absolutely. So, so what do you, what have been some of the weirdest products you've seen listed on Product Hunt? <laughs> we, yeah, we see some weird stuff, um, which is really fun. We actually have created a collection of weird products, um, which I'll, I'll forward to you later. Um, some of the weird ones that come to mind, Goat Simulator. Have you heard of that one? Yes. Yeah, that was April Fool's Day last year, right? It came out, everybody thought it was an April Fool's joke, but then it wasn't. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you took Tony Hawk, which is a game I love, and then turned them into a goat, basically, and you just roam around the world and just destroy things as a goat. It's really fun. Really odd, um, <laughs> but a really fun, fun game. Um, another unusual product that emerged was something called Selfie Dolls. And this was from some European company. And it was the service where you would send a photo of yourself or a friend, and they would manufacture a doll, like a voodoo doll, and uh, ship it to you. And it would look like you uh, to an extent. And um, there's just some weird things like that. I actually wanted to get them for the team actually for Christmas, but they were six weeks back ordered. So uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it happen. Yeah, that is weird. It reminds me of those like infomercials you used to see where people could get dolls that looked like their children and they just look creepy in general. I like <laughs> yes. that, that they're meant to look creepy. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of cute. As long as there's no needle inside of them, I think they're okay. They're they're adorable. <laughs> right. So you mentioned collections. Tell us a little bit about the mm -hmm. Product Hunt collections and how that works. So we, in the very beginning uh, of Product Hunt, we started creating these collections of products, basically theme collections of, let's say, iOS uh, photo sharing apps, GIF apps, um, weird products. Uh, recently, we had like apps for Gmail and other things like that. And then we enabled the community to do that and create these themselves. So anyone can sign up and start curating collections of products in any kind of category or theme that they want to choose. And so we've had hundreds and hundreds of these uh, created every single week. So these aren't, you don't review any of these products personally. It's is basically community driven, right? Something might, someone might post something. Do you remove things that you know are kind of not so great or do you just let the community patrol that? Yeah, once it's on the homepage, unless it's inappropriate or offensive in some way, uh, it's on there and then it's upvoted and it rises to the top where it falls down to the bottom and, and doesn't really get as much attention. And so it's it's ultimately driven by what people think is interesting, useful um, or, or compelling in some way. Interesting. Yeah, because there was a, you know, I know I'm in your email list too, and there were some Chrome extensions that you sent out or Gmail extensions. Yeah. And uh, I tried one yesterday that removed, it was supposed to remove your um or organize your followers or something like that. And um, I started to try it and I found that it was kind of annoying. I won't say what app it is, but I realized like, <laughs> yeah. I should have looked first to see if it was popular or not. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's a good place to go and really see. The, I, I feel like I agree with you. The community does patrol what's good and what's not. So that's nice. Yeah, and you'll see oftentimes if, if something is misadvertised or if it doesn't work, you'll see in the comments that people will call them out for it. And um, now it's not, ultimately Product Hunt is not necessarily a review site, but it's a really good way to surface new things, other things you would never ever search for. Would you ever search for a selfie doll? Maybe not. Um, but <laughs> if you visit a Product Hunt, you might now know about it. Right. For better or for worse. Yeah. So I mentioned the iOS app. You also have a Chrome extension for Product Hunt. What, is, what does that do? That's right. 
Yes. Yeah. So we, we launched the Chrome extension, I think three weeks ago now, and it has a few different things. One, you can click the S button, you can open up search and immediately start searching for a product. So if you're looking for, you know, some iOS photo sharing app as an example, or, or any kind of service, you can quickly search product hunt. Also, when you open a new tab, you can see this visual presentation of the current day's top upvoted products. So it sort of is an easy way to consume product hunt day to day. And then a few other things, you, you the notifications are actually coming very soon, browser notifications for that. And you can also post products that you find on the internet. So when you see something cool, something interesting, you can click that Chrome extension button and add that and post it yourself. Great. So uh, product hunt is for any kind of products, for apps, for services. What is it not for? It's not for a few things. Uh, events. So if you're doing a meetup, product hunt's probably not the place you want to post that. If you're a design shop or a contractor, you're, that's not a product. Um, so there's some things that are clearly not products. However, we do keep it fairly loose in definition so that we can have some creativity and just see where the community thinks what, what they think is interesting and cool um, rather than making it very specific. Uh, for example, we could do just apps, but then we would lose out on so many interesting creations that are happening every day. Right. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on and congratulations with your success with Product Hunt. I'm sure we can expect many more exciting things from you. Um, Ryan is the founder of Product Hunt and where can people, where's the best place to catch up with you personally? Um, I'm on Twitter all the time. I'm command tabbing to TweetDeck constantly. So RR Hoover is my Twitter username. And if you want to email me, it's ryan at producthunt.com. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Take care. See Coming you. up, Google's wireless plan and another flaw in iOS. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Harry's. Harry's is fixing a problem most of us have, paying too much for overpriced razors. Razors are expensive. They run about $4 a blade, and a guy who shaves every day spends hundreds of dollars a year just on razors. And when we go to the store to buy them, sometimes we have to deal with those pesky locked-up plexiglass cabinets. It's a pain. So there's a company that's fixing all of this for us. It's called Harry's. Harry's gives us high-quality razors at about half the price of those big brand blades. Harry's makes their razors in their own factory in Germany. They engineer them for sharpness and high performance. My husband has a Harry's kit, and his face is very smooth. Plus, he seems to like shaving, and both of us can feel really good about the price because Harry's makes and ships their own blades. They're a more efficient company, which means they can give us factory direct pricing in each kit. Uh, you get a razor in each kit with a handle that looks and great, feels great. I have one of the kits right here. Uh, there's three razor blades, this foaming shave gel. Uh, the Starter Truman set is an amazing deal. You get all of this for just $15. Uh, the look and feel of the set is great. They have the new aftershave moisturizer, and it moisturizes the skin. Like I said before, it's super soft, and there are all kinds of blades in there. Very sharp. Be careful. Go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase with the code TN2. And thanks to Keith for writing in to say the code didn't work. We checked it, and it is definitely working now. So go to harrys, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com. Enter the code TN2 at checkout. And we thank Harry's for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Google announced their new mobile service. It's called Project Fi. Here's what we know so far. It's a nationwide service. You pay $20 per month and you and you pay an extra $10 per month for every gigabyte of data that you use. One plan, one price, what the what? Sign me up right now because I am pretty sick and tired of Sprint who charges me too much money for the data my family doesn't use. And every time I try to talk to someone, they seem to trick me into some sort of new plan that seems great and cheap and then turns out to cost me $200 a month. But sadly, for me... For now, my family and I and our iPhones will have to wait for Google Fi. In fact, everyone who doesn't use a Nexus 6 phone will also have to wait. But if you do use a Nexus, Nexus 6 and you live in the Project Fi coverage area, you can now apply for an invite and let me know how it goes. Not being able to sign up for Project Fi is not the only flaw in iOS announced today. Engadget reports that the, at the RSA conference in San Francisco, researchers revealed an SSL bug that when exploited could cause your iPhone or your iPad to repeatedly crash and then restart. Here's the scenario. If you get near a malicious Wi-Fi hotspot, affectionately called a no iOS zone, a flaw in iOS will make your device crash, restart, and then connect to the network again, and then crash and restart 
again, in a never ending loop of pure madness, like you can see here, and you can't do anything about it. Sky Cure, the folks who found the flaw, have reported it to Apple, but have not released any more technical details about it to prevent hackers from taking advantage of the flaw. For now, just stay away from free Wi-Fi networks that you don't trust, update iOS, and if you should find yourself in this restart loop, run away and maybe go get yourself a Nexus 6. Hmm, your choice. Do you remember eBay? They're still around. And they released first quarter earnings today too. Income grew 4.8% since this time last year and revenue rose 4% to $4.45 billion, which beat Wall Street's expectations. The New York Times reports that the revenue jump came from eBay's PayPal unit mostly, which should make things interesting as the companies prepare to split eBay and PayPal into independent publicly traded companies. And finally, back in the day when my friend Patrick Norton got mad at his PC, he used to smash it with a sledgehammer. Maybe you remember me. I took a more delicate approach and tossed it off the side of a cliff into the Pacific Ocean. But that was years ago. There it goes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to, yeah, there, yep, I did it. That was years ago. Surely computers have improved enough since then to no longer cause us to take such drastic measures. Not so much, according to Ars Technica. This week, a man in Colorado Springs brought his Dell XPS 410 into an alleyway, Sopranos style, and shot it eight times with a 9mm high-point pistol he had recently bought off of Craigslist. The man was charged with discharging his gun within city limits, which is a misdemeanor and not recommended, even if you're really mad at your computer. And when asked whether it was worth it, the man said, oh, totally worth it. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can always write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. You can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News, today every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.